Hello dear brothers and sisters, before we get started on the topic of this video, I just want to um, reiterate that even though I pointed some numbers to possible dates um, or time frames in my previous videos, um, keep in mind that Abba Father sometimes shows his numbers to lead us to a destination that we may think might be a certain date or a certain time frame um, but it might not be what we think but later or it might not even point to a date at all but since we don't know for sure um, I always present numbers that I'm shown as possible dates just in case um, a lot of times they are just stepping stones to get us to the next point of revelation so just keep that in mind um, in regards to the number 611 that I mentioned in my August cancer videos I am still seeing it and he has given me new revelation um, regarding that that just might be another stepping stone down the road but it is significant nonetheless so um, I will cover that at the end of talking about what I want to talk about in this video and probably at least one more part <laughs> because um, there's just so many details and it's impossible either I have to make a really long video which I know most people don't want to watch because I just don't have the time or I chop it up into several different parts so that's what I tend to do that way people can still get the information without having to sit for too long so anyway I just wanted to make that claim and um, yeah so we'll get on with the topic of this video hi everyone um, thanks for coming and checking out this video and welcome to everyone but especially welcome to my new subscribers um, I'm glad to know that more people are receiving the messages that the father is asking me to share with you all so um, I've been really busy the past couple weeks, but uh, there's been something that's been, well, that the Holy Spirit has been um, putting on my heart to share. And before I go any further, let me give all glory to our Father in Heaven, Yahuwah, to His Son, Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, and to His Ruach HaKodesh. Because without His Ruach HaKodesh, I would not receive the information that I received that I share with you all so all glory to him it's not me um, I'm just trying to be an obedient servant so um, yeah so I uh, about a well maybe it's a couple weeks ago now in the middle of the night I received a word and I said okay I'll remember it and then um, when I woke up, I knew I had to research it because it was a word that I know I had heard before, but I wasn't real sure of the meaning because it's not a common word that people use on an everyday basis. So, um, before I get into what the word was, I received a confirmation a couple of days later after I received the word and a brother in Christ um, who has a big channel on, on YouTube, actually used the word in his video. And um, I was like, wow, okay, that's confirmation that I know I need to get on this and put it together. And the word that I received was vitriol. Um, most of you, or however many of you, may already know what the word means, but like I said, I wasn't exactly sure. So... Um, of course I had to go and look it up and when I did I was of course surprised like I usually am when the Ruach gives me something like that because I know that it means something so um, I pulled it up and it's a noun and it has two different meanings so the first meaning, and I'm, I'm going to read some of the synonyms, but it means cruel and bitter criticism. Now, as as I go through some, some of these synonyms, you're going to know um, what this is referencing. 
So let me just read through some of them. Um, revilement, condemnation, chastisement, rebuke, criticism, fault finding, blame, um, vilification, lashing, slander, backbiting, evil speaking. Um, and then when I came across this word, venom, as one of the synonyms, I'm like, okay, because I can't remember. I think I received the word after. Yes, I did. Uh, once again, I was watching our brother Earth to Spirit Warriors video that he put out. I believe it was the 17th, Friday the 17th of this month. And he was talking about the Mark of the Beast. Um, it's a very good video. I recommend you watch it. And um, how that it will be... Um, well, let me just put it this way. It's tied to the dark matter, dark energy, black goo, um, and tied to the movie Venom, which will come out in October. And um, because we all know that whoever takes the mark of the beast, it will be not only a spiritual change, but a physical change of one's DNA. So whoever receives it will no longer be human. Their DNA will be changed so that they can receive a demonic spirit that they cannot ever break free from. Basically, a demonic spirit will take over their body and that person is no longer that person. It might be them in their body, but they're gone. Their soul has been trapped for eternity. So, um, like I said, I received this word after I saw that video. And when I saw that Venom was one of the synonyms, I was like, oh my gosh. And you'll see where it all leads to. So, um, the other, well, let me just go back up to the synonym part. Um, we know that Hashatan, Satan, is the accuser of the brethren. And, um being the serpent, the venom would come from his mouth. So he is standing before the throne accusing us of everything that we do wrong in God's eyes. Um, every time we sin and transgress the Father's laws, the accuser is right there in the heavenly courts to accuse us so that he can have dominion over us. Um which, because it's the heavenly courts, our defender, Yeshua, is also there. And um, there's a court case going on with a pers uh, prosecutor and a defender. So, you know, right there, this word definitely refers to what Hashatan is doing in the heavenly courts. And here's another tie to um, the evil spiritual realm because vitriol is an archaic name for sulfuric acid. So that has to do with chemistry. So of course I had to go look into that. So I clicked on it and hang on, it's loading. Um, so, okay, so here it's tied to chemistry. Let me adjust this screen a little bit. Okay, so, um, as I said, it's an archaic name for a sulfate. Um, and a sulfate is, um... In chemistry, it's a salt or an ester of sulfuric acid. So it's anything that that is... Okay, here's the verb. Uh, to combine, treat, or impregnate 
thought that was interesting, with sulfuric acid, a sulfate or sulfates to convert into a sulfate. There are different types of sulfates, and when you mix them together, hang on, let me move the screen again. Um, you get different compounds, and they have given them different names, which is kind of interesting. Um, black vitriol is the first one, and it's a mixture of different things. And the Holy Spirit just kind of quickened in me when I read about the black vitriol. Now, see, when you mix the different ones, you get the different colors. And some of these names are just like um, Roman vitriol, spirit of vitriol, vitriol of argyle clay. Hmm, that's interesting. Um, because I'm thinking of the iron mixed with clay thing. So, be green vitriol and vitriol of clay. Hmm. Because that's where I was, um, I was going down that route also, uh, from Daniel. And when you go down here, and where it talks about the black vitriol, it says it's a mixture of iron sulfate and iron sulfite. So there's the iron part. Now this black vitriol, and I just have a sense in my spirit that this is connected to the black goo, um, dark energy, which apparently when CERN collides the protons in the Hadron Collider, this is the result and they have to keep it contained um, in containers you know it has to be kept really really cold and if it's put with other compounds like it that they try to reach one another it's basically it's it's demonic evil sentient matter is what it is so, could this be the iron mixed with clay, which is the body? Anyway, it's, as you see, all these others have which chemical is used, but the black vitriol doesn't because it's, it's just odd. Let me just leave it at that. Um, and I, I just feel that there's some kind of connection. So anyway, um... Over here, it says the alchemical diagram from Daniel Stoltz von Stolzenberg, Theatrum Chimicum, um, from 1614, representing vitriol as the alchemical motto, Visita Interiora Terre Rectifin... Sorry, <laughs> I don't, I'm not a Latin speaker or reader. Rectificando... In Veni's Occultum Lapidem, which means visit the interior of the earth and rectifying, i.e. purifying, you will find the hidden secret stone. So, wait till you see where all this goes, guys. This is unbelievable. Um, so, basically, the vitriol, it, you know, it has to do with chemistry and sulfates, but it's tied to alchemy. So before we go any further, I just want to claim that um, I am not promoting the uh, pursuit of studying alchemy or anything else in this video if it's not in scripture. I am not condoning it or promoting it. I am only sharing it so that um, people are aware of the possibility that this is how things will be manifested um, when the time comes. So, alchemy goes back thousands of years and um, apparently it began in ancient Egypt. Uh, the word alchemy apparently comes from a, a word alchemet 
which means from Egypt. Uh, commit means black. So there's another tie to black. <laughs> um, so let me just read a little bit of this, and then we're gonna. You're, I'll show you where this is all going. Uh, alchemy is a philosophical and proto-scientific tradition practiced throughout Europe, Africa, and Asia. So it's, people still practice it today, and it is definitely tied to the New Age movement. So if you've stumbled across this video and you're into the New Age doctrine, please, 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 you really need to understand that you're being deceived and you're heading down a very dark path which is um, covered with uh, all this love and you know transforming into your higher self and all that garbage because there's only one way to do that and it's not the way that is being taught in the New Age uh, community. These are false doctrines and um, trust me, I, I, I know a little bit about that because I was actually going down that road before the Lord pulled out his shepherd's hook and pulled me back. So um, yeah, there's definitely ties uh, to to the alchemy and it all has to do with transmutation um, the physical physics of alchemy has to do with transmutation of base metals uh, turning lead into noble metals particularly gold but there's also the spiritual aspect that goes along with it because this knowledge was given to mankind by the fallen angels so it's not anything good um, it ties to the creation of an elixir of immortality so you see this is where it's going to tie into the mark of the beast because people will be told that if you take this you will never die And you'll have all these superhuman qualities and powers and um, basically which is why all the comic book superhero movies have been exploding within the last, uh, what, 15 or so years when all the movies started coming out, maybe longer, time's going by so fast. Um, yeah, and of course in the movies they make the superheroes, which are actually um, mutants. They are what, we, what would be considered in mythology as uh, demigods or titans, because they're half human, half god. And this is what they will be offering to people. And... It will be part of the grand deception. So, uh, moving on with this. Um, the perfection of the human body and soul was thought to permit or result from the alchemical magnum opus. And in the Hellenistic and Western tradition, the achievement of gnosis, which is knowledge. So, right here, this is tied to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which is going right back to the garden they're going right back to the beginning in Europe the creation of a philosopher's stone was variously connected with all of these object or sorry projects um, it's since it's been around for so long for thousands of years it, have, it has of course gone into all the different um, factions of life, you know, different religions and whatnot. And it ties to, um, well, where the, the 
ancient philosophers and I guess the modern day ones got this information from was something called the Hermetic Principles. It's related to magic, mythology, and religion. So, okay, I just want to quickly go over this part because it's all tying together and I'm going somewhere with it. So, um, the Hermeticism or the Hermetic Principles um, is a religious, philosophical, and esoteric tradition based primarily upon writings attributed to Hermes or Hermes uh, Trismegistus which means thrice greatest Hermes. These writings have greatly influenced the Western esoteric tradition and were considered to be of great importance during both the Renaissance and the Reformation. The tradition claims that, or claims descent from a Prisca Theologia, or a Theologia, a doctrine that affirms the existence of a single true theology that is present in all religions and that was given by God to man in antiquity. We know as Christians that those uh, statements or that statement is a lie. The fallen angels are the ones that gave this information to mankind, which was forbidden by the Creator, the Most High, Yahuwah. Um, but it's, like I said, I'm going to tie it to, you'll see in a second, um, an account of how Hermes Trismegistus received the name Thrice Great is derived from the Emerald Tablet of Hermes Trismegistus, wherein it is stated that he knew the three parts of the wisdom of the whole universe. The three parts of the wisdom are alchemy, astrology, and thergy. So those three things right there were forbidden teachings that the fallen ones, the fallen angels, the ones that came down to, onto Mount Hermon, the 200, those are the ones that taught mankind these things. So it was not given by the Most High. Um, so right there is, you know, a deception. So this um, ties back to ancient Egypt where, uh, where the... Um, here it says the origin and identity. Hermes uh, Trismegistus may be associated with the Greek god Hermes and the Egyptian god Thoth. And um, the two gods were worshipped as one. I'm just going to cover this quickly. I'm not going into too much detail. Um, Hermes, the Greek god of interpretive communication, was combined with Thoth, the Egyptian god of wisdom, to become the patron of astrology and alchemy. In addition, both gods were psychopomps guiding souls to the afterlife. Remember that. And remember Hermes, the Greek god. So when you scroll down to here, you see it says, um, The Hermetic literature among the Egyptians, which was concerned with conjuring spirits and animating statues, Inform the oldest Hellenistic writings on Greco Babylonian astrology. So, and on the newly, newly developed practice of alchemy. So, you see right here, this is where um, it, the Kabbalah Jewish mysticism came from Babylon. It was something that was brought back from the captivity and handed down through false teaching during the captivity and returned with the Israelites when they came back to Judah and it was just passed down throughout the generations and taught as something that was the truth and obviously it was taught by false teachers who were the Jews who call themselves Jews and are not so the systematic religious cult practices, so that right there shows you that it is not um, having, having to do with personal ascension, that it is not with um, uh, anything scriptural or biblical, and um, it offered the adept a means of personal ascension from the constraints of physical being. This latter tradition has led to the confusion of Hermeticism with Gnosticism. So, um, down here, if you 
the Hermetica is a category of papyri containing spells and initi initiatory induction procedures. So uh, here's the help of herbs and gems and odor. So it's a, it's about dark magic. It's forbidden arts that they fall on ones taught mankind. So when you scroll on down, you see all the different um, Hermetic revival um, during the Middle Ages and the Renaissance and um, Islamic tradition. And then you keep going down to where it says New Age revival. Modern occultists suggest that some Hermetic texts may be of pharaonic origin and that the legendary 42 essential texts, 42 is an occult number, that contain the core Hermetic religious beliefs and philosophy of life remain hidden in a secret library. And I wonder what secret library that would be. Probably in Rome somewhere. <clears throat> So yeah, so there's just an overall, because I'm going to tie that into um, the Greek god Hermes, <clears throat> excuse me, and which is the Roman god Mercury. And um, it's going to tie into some other stuff, so don't worry. And the only reason we are covering this is because this all leads to the mark of the beast and it is uncanny how the father well not uncanny for him but f for us observers and th this physical flesh um how he shows his watchmen pretty much the same things not all of them of course but a lot of us he'll show the same topics that he wants us to sound the alarm on at the same time and when he showed me this, um, I had already seen, well, he had already showed it to me. And then as I'm thinking about it and trying to find time to put it together, I see other brothers and sisters covering the same topics that I was shown before I even saw their videos. So, um, this is why I do this. I believe that it's not only a warning for those of us who are watching, but hopefully someone who is caught up in this um, deception will stumble across this video and understand that they are being deceived and that there are eternal consequences for following that deception. So that's the reason I'm covering it. I don't like the topics that... <laughs> the father wants me to share because they have to do with the other side but we have to know you know everything's being brought into the light and being exposed and if it's not exposed then we don't know that it's dangerous so that's why I'm doing this so basically um, in the next video I'll get into um, a little bit more of the Kabbalah stuff I'm not going to go into too deep of it because there's no reason for that. I just want to show how it is linked, I believe, to what the Mark of the Beast will be. And that is the main point of this series of videos is to point to, I believe the Father is saying that that time is, is coming very soon. Um, lots of prophetic messages are being given to brothers and sisters about destruction coming and judgment coming to the United States and once that happens that will be the domino that sets all the other ones in motion which will lead to that time where people will be forced either to take the mark and deny Christ or not and I don't think it'll be a very long period before something like that happens. And of course, if something like that does happen, then the message needs to go out beforehand to warn people so that when it does come. So maybe someone sees this video and they know someone that is caught up in New Age um, doctrine and Kabbalah and and it's very easy for somebody who's searching some new thing to lead them to spirituality because I went down that road 
Um, luckily, I didn't get too far into it before my Savior, our Savior, pulled me back. So, it's a warning to those who need to hear not to go down that road because you may not have time to turn back so anyway guys I just want to end this part I don't want to make these videos too long so that's why I'm cutting them into different pieces but like I said I won't go into too much detail in part two and I don't hopefully it won't be more than an, a part two because well I'm going to try to tie in there's some other topic that does tie into this and so I will try to do it at the end but I will not go into too much detail about um, Kabbalah or none of that because I there's no need to study what it's all about is just want to show you the key points of um, how it's tied to what I believe will be a DNA change which will be the mark of the beast so with that being said I pray that you all are blessed I love you guys I'm praying for you all please pray for me and I pray that you have a blessed day. Shalom.